Okay, welcome to my next video. Still going with this uh, bowl making series. This is something a little bit different. Uh, I'd like to say it's out of Carol Rothman's book. This is what she calls a footed candy dish. She made hers out of cherry and I believe red uh, bloodwood. Uh, I don't have any bloodwood, but I've got some cherry and I've got some purple heart. So I'm going to use purple heart as a little accent. So this has, uh, this is going to go, go together to make one blank. And you got two smaller blanks. And that's going to make the foot for the dish. This is going to make just a, a small bowl. Uh, open the top bowl real fairly wide open. And uh, so that whole blank is going to make this. But what i got to do is you've got two patterns here to use on this. First you have this, this pattern. You're going to apply to this blank. And cut that octagon out. So it's uh, that's eight sides. And so we're going to cut that octagon out, and then we're going to glue these. We got some four fives and four threes. We're going to glue these together around that octagon to make the the circle around it for the uh, accent that goes on the top of the the lip of the, the little bowl. So and then we'll apply the pattern and start cutting the rings. And then have to uh, cut two little pieces here to make the little foot to go on it. And there'll be a lot of sanding. So anyway, that's the process. I'm going to get me some guidelines on that cherry blank. I've got to sand it a little bit first. And I'm going to apply that octagon pattern and cut it out. Okay, so I got the two, the four short ones glued on, A, A, B, B. And then I went to my crosscut sled and I trimmed those down almost to that. And then I went to the sander and smoothed it off. And I'm going to take each one and make sure that they match up. I believe they do look like right there, but I'll look at them a little closer. <clears throat> and then I'll glue these four pieces on. And we'll be close to, and we'll trim these, we'll also trim these off. And we we'll just about to have our blank ready then. Now I've got all these pieces glued on, got them trimmed off and sanded down flush. Mark the center with an awl, then I used me a, a marking knife and I marked me some guidelines there. So I line the pattern up. I didn't put the guidelines on before because I wanted to use this to make sure it was centered in everything. And that way it'd be accurate, more accurate than I could probably measure it. So anyway, that's absolutely the dead center of that according to this pattern if the pattern is correct and my printer printed it correctly so now i'm going to remove the pattern and we'll set everything down smooth on both sides whether it be um, this little bit there's a slight difference in this three quarter and this three quarter so they don't match up perfectly and we'll sand those down and get everything just perfectly smooth okay i got it all sanded had to carry that line down as I went as I was sanding and I now use the tape as the center seam and all that so but I managed to keep that line in place as I was sanding down as you can see that blank is just big enough and we've got to cut that at an angle anyway that's the outer perimeter of the cut 
It's just barely on the blank. Uh, could be that I cut that a uh, half a blade width when I cut that when I ripped that uh, a purple heart. I might have should have added a sixteenth, but it's going to work. Uh, these these two are are right at the edge, just before the edge, and these are right on the edge. That but that's going to work okay, I believe. I'm going to cut this at forty degrees, and I, I'm going to use the number nine just like I did cutting the rest of it and cutting all these things off. And uh, so I'm going to get over there. i got to set the table at, at 40 degrees, table on the scroll saw at 30 degrees, and uh, cut that outer perimeter. I think there's only two rings on this. I'll double check that before I get too far, make sure I know what I'm doing. So i got to go set my saw up and make sure i got a good blade in it. Okay, so I got my table set at 40 degrees. I uh, got a number nine blade, and I'm gonna just cut this perimeter with this, and I'll use this to set my uh, bench press table with the same angle so I can grow an entry hole. We'll do the inside of this one at 40. The second ring will be cut at 38. Here we go on this one at 40. Got the perimeter cut, set my drill press at the same angle as this outside. I drilled, I used a 16th inch drill bit, we've got a number nine blade, and plus it's a real, it's a very uh, dense material and it's uh, very thick at that angle. And a blade tends to flex, I think the 16th be <clears throat> less likely to flex than a smaller one. So anyway, we're going to finish cutting this ring off. Well, for the second ring, all we have to do is place this first ring on the blank. Mark the outside and the inside. Because this 40 degree angle will not line those outsides up. So we're going to cut the second ring at 38 degrees, but we're going to use this outside line to cut the outer perimeter. Uh, and then um, and I've reset the table to 38 degrees. So we're going to cut this at 38 instead of the 40, uh, which is a really a good thing because the uh, the drill bit really flexed in that hole, and I'll get rid of some of that, most of that right there by doing this. And uh, kind of clean things up. But uh, I got to cut on the inside of that line a little bit because you can't quite get the pencil all the way in there to mark right exactly where it is. So this is going to be kind of a almost like a cut in the dark, but that gives you kind of an idea of where you're supposed to cut. But if I cut on this out right on that line, it's going to be. Uh, too far out. I got to cut just. I'm gonna cut just to the inside of it. I can sand whatever's left if it's extra. But uh, and then hopefully when I drill this next one, I won't the bit won't flex in the hole and give us a problem. But then we got to cut the base also, so we'll have the same opportunity to get rid of any bad marks. Now I'm going to cut the inside of the second ring at the same 38 degree angle I just cut this outer part with. And then we're going to put it back on this the same way I did the other ring. Mark the inside and going to cut it, the outer perimeter, at 45 degrees. And then cut the, well I'm not going to mark the inside, we'll just cut the, we won't mark it again. This is the last ring. We're just going to, once we get this off, We'll cut the, the the base at 45 degrees around the same perimeter. Uh, 
Okay, we did the same thing again. Put that ring on, traced around the outer uh, edge of the bottom of it. And then we're going to cut this at 45 degrees. And then we're going to, and this is going to narrow this down. And that's where we're going to put the little pedestal. Uh, but the first two rings, even with all that cutting and all, and it, they're matching up pretty well and not perfect, but they're going to be easy to sand, I think. So anyway, I'm going to cut this, and then we'll see about building the pedestal for it. Next, I'm going to glue these two rings together. I've already sanded them and made them match really nice. You can see that there where that blade, or that bit flexed. Uh, luckily, on the outside of that next ring, I cut that again and it removed the bad places that left there. And this is easy to sand out. They match up pretty well considering everything we did here. Let me get these uh, glued up and in the press. And while that's in the press, I can be working on some of the other parts. Now this is the four inch piece of cherry, four by four, which is part of the base of the pedestal. I've drawn a three inch circle on it. I'm gonna go cut that on the saw at 28 degrees. But first I gotta change the blade. I've pushed that blade a little further than I should have in this cherry. So I'll get a new blade in it. I'll reset the table and I'll cut that out at 28 degrees. Well, this is a three inch piece of cherry and she says to trace that on there like that. I just looked at that circle and measured it and actually used the compass to draw that and it fits perfectly. So I got to cut that straight on down with no angle. Well, I made a very nice match. I'm very pleased with that. So what I got to do now, I'm going to match the grain up and glue this together and clamp them and then I'll have a little time while everything sets and the glue sets up. Well, here we go again, another week, another power outage. I lost 18 hours. It's been over 24 hours since I last recorded. I lost 18 hours. I got up yesterday morning to thunderstorms when it wasn't even supposed to be raining the rest of the week. I knocked the power out at five o'clock in the morning and didn't come on till late last night. Anyway, I've sanded, got these glued together and sanded the inside of it. Kind of work this down to bring the scallops up a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue this base on. And uh, I'm glue the base on. you got to get the rings lined up, the grain lined up the proper direction. But glue that on and, cl and clamp it in the, uh, in the uh, little bowl press. And then we'll do the outside sanding. And I've got the... Uh, a little pedestal made. They come out of those two little pieces that we had and I uh, had to shape it and get all that lined up. I think it looks okay. And this will go, uh, you know, go like this, bottom or large end down. Anyway, so for now I got to glue these together and I'm not going to film all that because I'm trying to move on a little faster here. And then I'll do some sanding and shaping and then we'll glue this on and do some final sanding and shaping and then we'll be uh, ready to put a finish on it. Well this is where I'm going to call it finished for the purpose of this, purposes of this video. Uh, I still haven't got all the finish on it yet. This guy, there's two coats, real, real light coats of uh, uh, polyurethane uh, mixed half and half with uh, uh, mineral spirits. And I've got two coats of that on there. It doesn't have a, much of a sheen on it. Uh, 
one thing it's very thin coats and it's not really a shiny poly it's a warm gloss but it'll get it'll build up a little more as I go I'm gonna put several coats on it but that brings out the color and the, the uh, difference between the woods so you can kind of see what that what that looks like uh, but I'm gonna call that done for now because I'm way behind this week I should already be posting this video much less instead of finishing it but that's this week's project I've got another little project I'm gonna try to do tomorrow if good Lord wills and I don't lose power or anything like that a little short one day project that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I just now got the nerve to do it and since I've learned how to uh, sand on these bowls and line up the rings I'm going to do one of Steve Good's little mugs I never would try that because I didn't like the idea of having to sand all those rings together but I've got better equipment now and I'm going to try that but anyway that's this video hope you like it if you do hit the like button I'm not sure how well it's going to turn out it kind of got interrupted a couple of times and I kind of lose track of where I am and what I'm doing because I got a lot of other things going on uh, so Anyway, hit the like button if you like it. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button because I'm going to do some more stuff like this. That's Cherry and Purple Heart. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.